Hi, everyone. We're going to get started in about two minutes. Just want to give everyone a chance to get connected, download the software, or update the software if they need to. Otherwise, give us about two minutes. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining the Partnership for a Drug-Free New Jersey's 15-minute child break presentation. Today's webinar will be presented by Bill Lillis, but first I'd like to introduce Angela Conover. Angela? Thanks, Greg. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for um, joining us today um, for this 15-minute child break presentation. Um, when we're going to discuss uh, tips and trends and, and uh, communication techniques that you can use with the children in your lives uh, to discuss drugs and alcohol and uh, really enhance communication. So appreciate you taking the time on this beautiful day uh, to join us. Uh, we're so pleased that we have our uh, coordinator of parent education, Bill Willis, He's a certified prevention specialist and under uh, non-social distancing circumstances, travels the state um, doing this presentation in person um, throughout the year. So um, really looking forward to Bill's presentation and the conversation. If you guys have any questions as we go, please um, enter them into the chat feature um, of your Zoom screen and we'll get to those questions at the end of the presentation. Um, so now I'll turn things over to Bill. Angela, thanks. And thanks to everybody here, especially Ocean County Library, the staff that helped set that up, and the residents of Ocean County taking place, and if anybody else who decided to join us. So we're here to talk to you about the important role you play in preventing underage drinking, marijuana use, vaping, and the use of other drugs. You may not think it can ever happen to your child, your grandchild, or someone you love, but unfortunately we cannot predict who and who will not develop a substance use disorder. We do know the earlier children start using these substances, the more likely there is for a problem to occur. So it's essential every parent and adult caregiver be equipped with the knowledge and skills to address the issue. Research completed by the Partnership for Drug-Free New Jersey demonstrates that communication is key. Parents who talk to their children at least 15 minutes a day have children who are 67% less likely to experiment with drugs. Think about that. Engaging in meaningful conversations with your children just by sitting at the dining room table on a regular basis greatly reduces their risks of trying alcohol. So the topics we're gonna to cover 
what are your children facing today? We'll give you some recent data on substance use, misuse, and abuse by our young people. We'll give you up-to-date information on the most prominent drugs your children are exposed to. We'll provide you with some specific strategies useful for prevention, some teachable moments, and we'll finish with some take-home points. One of the questions we're often asked at the partnership is, when should I start talking to my child? The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends you begin the conversation at the age of nine. Now, even before that, your children are learning attitudes and behaviors that are in the home or they're seeing around in their neighborhood or their school or in their community. So addressing the issue when your child is mature enough, when things occur, that's also an important thing to keep in mind. Let's look at one video. Hey, son. So, you're turning 13, becoming a man. Your hormones are surging, starting to notice the girls. You know, maybe your body's doing some funny things. So, I'm not sure what happened there, so give me a minute to get the slideshow up and running again. Try again. Hey, son. So, you're turning 13, becoming a man. Your hormones are surging, starting to notice the girls. You know, maybe your body's doing some funny things. So, you want to talk? Or we could talk about drugs. Yeah, let's talk about drugs. There's no wrong way to talk to your kids about drugs. Need help? Get help. Visit our website at drugfree.org. So the conversation about sex is important. We're not covering that topic here, but we hope you walk away with a better understanding of how to prevent drug use. What would you say if your child were approaching something this dangerous? And yet, with something as damaging as drugs, millions of parents say nothing. Say something. So if you're worrying about this child, it's filmed with a rubber knife. So this child's not in danger. But if we're not discussing the issue of alcohol and drugs early on, we are, we could be putting our kids in danger. So here's data from the Modern the Future study that gives us information on what our youth are doing. So on the left, you see alcohol, our most prominent drug of choice among these age groups. However, if we look at recent data, we've seen a steady decline of regular use of alcohol and binge drinking. So those numbers are going down slightly, but still having 52% of our seniors talking about regular use of alcohol still is a number we need to address. In the middle, marijuana, right? 12% at eighth grade. And look at what happens that go when it goes from 29 to 36%. So if we're talking about marijuana to 11th or 12th graders, it's too late. That number goes from 12 to 29. So again, the conversation needs to take place much earlier than some people think. And then the, the crisis we faced with vaping in the last two years. So, uh, right, 36% of 10th graders using, 41% of 12th graders using. Just ask you to think of, about uh, a company like Old Navy or Pepsi, that if these companies were able to brag that 40% of their kids, 40% of seniors were using their products. So we've got to challenge the industry in a meaningful way if we're going to reduce the, pro the use of vaping. Here's data in New Jersey. So uh, again, the prominent drugs of choice on the middle school, middle school level, alcohol, marijuana, tobacco, and prescription drugs, right? So uh, noting too many parents might be waiting till high school. You can see from this chart that that needs to be addressed earlier on, okay? Some, uh, Noting what kids are using. So when you think of illicit drug use, right, the number, uh, the yellow 
box on the left, right? Any illicit drug, overwhelmingly marijuana, the prominent drug of choice. The blue bar on the right, again, marijuana, the prominent drug of choice. But there are other issues, right? Cocaine, MDMA, heroin is an issue as well. This slide here noting daily nicotine vaping use. So over 10% of our 12th graders saying they've used a vaping product. And on the right, that number here noting kids thinking they're using a nicotine vaping device, that, that the product having a vaping in it or nicotine in it, well, that number I would argue is completely unrealistic. Overwhelmingly, every vaping product that a young person is using has nicotine in it. Otherwise, they're not getting the hit, the kick. So uh, we'll talk about vaping in greater detail in a few more slides. The first idea about prevention here, we talk about stress. So on the right side, we're in the prevention field and parents. So why are kids using to feel good about themselves, to look cool? What we were overlooking is the issue of stress. So those ideas of stress, but there are valid reasons as to what kids might be using. Family issues, relationship with friends, what's being said about them on social media. All of these are factors that lead to unhealthy levels of stress. So we encourage parents, you need to be a role model on how you handle stress and you teach your children that stress is a part of everyday life there are healthy ways to handle stress and unhealthy ways to deal with it. So an example, what is a teenager learning from a parent when they say, oh, I had a tough week, I could really use a drink right now. We're saying that we're using alcohol to handle our stress. So again, healthy ways to handle stress and unhealthy ways. Just moving on to the issue of opioids in New Jersey, and we know uh, Ocean County for a significant period of time was the epicenter, the, uh, a, one of the prominent areas where opioids were a major factor. So this is statewide data. And if you look, suspected overdose deaths, so over 1,300 in 2013, that number went up all the way to 2018 to over 3,000. So sad, but now when we look at 2019, at least we can see the number has stabilized. It's no longer going up. We see this number now going down by about 90 or so, which is good news. We are worried certainly about the effects of COVID-19 having an impact on reversing that. And then an example again of good prevention in New Jersey. So when you look at the left, 2013 opioid prescriptions dispensed, over 5.2 million. Well, we reduced that number to under 3.7 million all the way on the right at 2019. So the partnership advocated for a change in prescription medication and the change where now adults are only giving a five-day dosage rather than 30, 60, or 90, and then addressing the issue with our kids, right? So uh, from prevention, doctor prescribed opioid use before high school graduation increases the risk of future misuse after high school by 33%. So uh, that is a significant issue. Our dentists driving the number, number of dentists that are prescribing opioids was a major effort we've made. So we've educated, we've worked to help educate the medical field on this issue and we are seeing the results of good prevention. Okay. This yellow one is my postpartum depression. This one, sciatica, whatever that is. I got these after my hysterectomy, or my prostatectomy, stomachectomy. And this guy is in pain from my last hip replacement. And this orange one is... For teens, getting drugs can be as easy as opening your medicine cabinet. So uh, working with the American Medicine Chest Challenge, we encourage parents to take an inventory of their prescription and over-the-counter medication, watch what's in the medicine cabinet, Secure your medication. So any psychoactive medication should no longer be kept in the bathroom. That should be secured in a different 
place in the home. And then when it's when you have unused or unwanted or expired medicine, that should be disposed of. So taken to the police department, some uh, pharmacies are now taking that, and we always have a annual take back medication day that we work with. So and encouraging people to take your medicine as prescribed. And talking to your children specifically about this issue is good prevention. Okay. So moving on to vaping, at the bottom you see some of the prominent ways in which kids vape, the different products, the pipe, the cigar in the middle, the tank devices, and then the rechargeable e-cigarettes and now disposable e-cigarettes. So, uh, and then up at the top of the chart, noting that overwhelmingly many kids are using a flavored product to use mango would be an example bubble gum so this is an example of what the industry did to get our kids hooked okay. up on the left you see data that teens are more likely to use e-cigarettes rather than regular cigarettes right so we did some great work in reducing tobacco use among our kids and that was done with a variety of ways we increasing the price of tobacco having a successful campaign that made tobacco uncool. And we drove down that number and now we're seeing the loss of those gains now because of kids using vaping. Okay. At the bottom, the Surgeon General, right? A five year increase of 900% over the past few years. E-cigarettes, vape pens, jewels. They're often marketed as safe alternatives to smoking, but their cool designs, fun flavors, and the fact that they're easy to hide means it's not only smokers who want them, it's kids. And for kids, they're definitely not safe. Teens should absolutely not use jewels, e-cigarettes, or any similar products. Here's why. When kids use Juuls or other e-cigarettes, they're getting a big dose of nicotine. This disrupts their brain development. It changes the connections between brain cells, causing problems with learning, mood, and impulse control. It makes depression and anxiety worse. And as any smoker can tell you, nicotine is highly addictive. That makes it very difficult to quit e-cigarettes. And vaping makes it much more likely that kids will smoke real cigarettes later. It's true that a few e-cigarette brands don't contain nicotine, but most of them do. And all of them contain other dangerous chemicals like these. Formaldehyde, which is found in glue and embalming fluid. Diacetyl, which causes lung disease. Benzene, that's a carcinogen linked to leukemia. Some tests have also found metal particles in the e-cigarette vapor. The devices themselves can also be unsafe. They can explode. The long-term effects of using e-cigarettes are unknown. And because there are no standards, we don't know the ingredients in these products. We don't want children to take unnecessary risks with their health. And begin a lifelong addiction to nicotine. Talk to your kids about e-cigarettes and how to say no to these harmful products. Okay, so here's some data that occurred over the past year, we had 2,600 individuals reported with a vaping-related illness. One 16-year-old needed a double lung transplant, right? We had over 60 deaths that occurred, one of them in New Jersey. And how was it occurring? So the Center for Disease Control did their work. They noted most of the illnesses were the result of illicit products containing THC and vitamin E acetate. So Vitamin E, you think, oh, I'm using it on for my skin to help me out, and that is viable. But what they were seeing is when the acetate, you needed to liquefy the marijuana products. So the acetate was done to do that. So you liquefy the product, the THC, and then your battery heats the product, and that's what creates the aerosol, and that's what was going into the lungs of our young people impairing normal function, okay? Just a quick look at a tire on the left-hand side. So it looks like a normal sweatshirt, but the, the young man has the vaping product where he can inhale, inhale with the string, 
and there's surely a pocket inside where he can keep all of his vaping products inside. On the right, you have bags where, you know, backpacks where the kids can hide all of their vaping products. So an example of how tough it is for parents to be made aware. We have industries designing products so parents, teachers, and other staff members are, are it making it harder for them to see the vaping, product, the vaping being used. Some symptoms on the left, coughing, shortness of breath, chest pain, so respiratory issues, right? Nausea, vomiting, fever, and chills. And then we were hearing that from pediatricians that for some, vaping was causing abdominal pain, diarrhea, or weight loss. So, uh, and then in New Jersey in April of this year, we were successful in eliminating the sales of flavored vaping products. So, that is a positive step forward, but many of those flavored products can, are still available to kids. And if I want to sell the product, I can go across state, bring it in and sell the devices. Okay. Most of the kids are getting the products via uh, in the old way, just like you got alcohol, you'd go into a vaping shop and you say, all right, here's $20, give me, can you buy the product for me? And you can keep two or $3, right? It could use the uh, Visa card, a $25 Visa card, go online, and uh, all they have to do is click on, say they're over 18 and they have access to the vaping product. So all examples of the reason why parents need to keep a watchful eye on what's going on. As to why they're using, so primarily up at the top on the left-hand side, a lot of kids saying to experiment, to see what it's like, because it tastes good, right? We were talking about mango and other flavored products or bubble gum, and, right? And they simply see it as a way of having a good time. So one example, much like people in years past would roll rings with cigars, there are games and activities related to vaping products that kids play with. We talked about relieving stress or tension, and that's an issue, and then simply to feel good or to deal with boredom. So uh, those are important reasons for parents to be aware of and to address when it comes to vaping. Hey. Hey. Dad, what are you doing? Yeah. What am I? A burrito? No. A larva? A larva? No. I'm a joint. Actually, you're a little too fat to be a joint. So you know about joints? There's no wrong way to talk to your kids about drugs. Need help? Get help. Visit our website at drugfree.org. So talking to your kids about marijuana has become more and more challenging for today's parents. Many states have passed recreational use for marijuana for individuals over 21. We know there's a referendum in New Jersey, so in November we're going to vote to see whether marijuana will be legalized. So there are going to be a number of organizations and businesses, a media campaign to say that marijuana is okay and solves a lot of problems. But as parents, you have to challenge the idea that marijuana use is not harmful. You have to be well prepared on how to handle this. You have to be able to talk about this with your kids. So the marijuana available today is much more potent, not just in comparison to 20 or 30 years ago, but it contains much higher levels of THC, the psychoactive component in marijuana that gets you high. So based on confiscations of drug paraphernalia in New Jersey and the rise of vaping, we're not seeing kids rolling joints or smoking bombs anymore. That's fading out more and more kids have used their vaping devices to experiment and use marijuana on a regular basis. We see here in the chart that marijuana has negative effects on the brain. Regular use often has negative effects on students doing well in high school, can lead to use of other drugs. So uh, we know it is an issue for the adolescent brain to stay healthy. So we want our kids to get to 21 without using alcohol, tobacco, or other drugs. We know the brain doesn't fully develop until our mid-20s. So addressing marijuana is an important part of that. 
And then there are also recent studies, if you want to send an email my way, about the use of marijuana and psychosis, so different personality disorders. We see regular use of marijuana. It's not going to hit 50% of the people or 40%, but there is a number of people that develop some sort of mental health issues as a result of high and regular uses of marijuana. Anyone else? My name is David, and in eight years, I'll be an alcoholic. Hi, David. I'll start drinking in middle school, just at parties. But my parents won't start talking to me about it till high school. And by then, I'll already be in some trouble. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. The thing is, my parents won't even see it coming. So start talking. Who's next? Before they start drinking. So when you look at the overall harm caused to our society by improper drug use, absenteeism, dropping out of school, suspension, physical and sexual abuse committed by adolescents, alcohol still remains our number one problem, right? Clearly impacts the brain's development, interferes with memory, as our brains are not fully developed until our mid-20s, as I noted before, right? critical period, not only for one's intellectual development, but also affecting a teenager's social and emotional development. So if you're using alcohol to smooth relationships or connect with people of the opposite sex or just to feel comfortable with others, well, if you're using that as a social skill, chances are you may develop a problem later on. We saw where those who start before age 15 are especially vulnerable to developing an alcohol use disorder. So research shows that almost 50% of those who have an alcohol use disorder meet the criteria before age 21. Reducing the harm done as a result of alcohol is one of the hardest challenges we face. Use of other drugs are acknowledged to be harmful when being used by teenagers. Unfortunately, both among our young people and sad to say, even among many parents, there's an acceptance by many when it comes to underage drinking. As if to say it's only alcohol, right? Many times parents are physically present when teenagers have been drinking. So uh, as I said before, we've done some great work in reducing tobacco use. We need to use that same comprehensive approach, ut utilizing evidence-based prevention programs to address and make alcohol uncool, right? We've proven we can do that. We can change attitudes. We can change behaviors and taking on the issue of alcohol. Very important for parents to do. Okay. So talking about being involved with your kids. Hi, it's Patsy. Today I'm going to demonstrate the Patsy pat down. It's a way to check your kids for drugs without them even knowing it. Hi, Beth. Give me a hug, honey. Mm, I love you. That's a nice purse. Okay, there you go. Have a good time. Don't be a patsy. Learn a better way at drugfree.org. Okay, so let's see if we can do better than patsy when it comes to preventing what's going on. We do know parents can make a difference. Drugs are there. A couple of years ago, we had them actually selling it on our block. We're scared. But we're not going to let this epidemic take over our family. Parents can make a difference. That's why I got my children involved in sports. I'm the coach. Need help? Get help. Visit our website at drugfree.org. So we know as children get older that other individuals, their peers, have an impact on their attitudes and behaviors. But the parents still can make a difference. So letting your children know what your attitude is regarding alcohol and other drugs is still good prevention throughout their teen years, even into their time in college or young adulthood. Okay. Here are some warning signs. So uh, physical reactions to the drug, slurred speech, skin abrasions, glassy or red eyes, itchy skin, neglecting appearance or hygiene or a change in weight. So all of those could be physical signs, okay? And there are emotional ways in which we may have a change in mood, sleeping patterns, right? 
fighting with friends or depression or loss of motivation. If a kid is nodding off, and I would argue if a kid is knocking, nodding off during meals, that is a specific issue that could mean uh, alcohol or drug use is being used. If spoons are missing, that's a clear sign of heroin use. Watching the grades, right? Lateness, skipping class, missing money. So watching where the money is. So how much money does a kid spend? What does he or she do with it? Watching the money is good prevention, okay? And or incense or air freshener, that could be hiding use of a marijuana or other product that creates some odors. We talked about missing prescription medication. Okay. So if there is an issue, we ask you to bring it to get a expert involved, right? Call your doctor, call the school nurse, call the guidance counselor. We need to get over the issue, oh, that oh, we can handle it by ourselves. This is a health issue, and if you had another health issue with your kid, you would involve the medical field in that issue. So just alcohol and drug abuse fits into that category as well. Okay. There's some risk factors. That if there's a history of substance use disorder in the family, that kid is more likely to develop a substance use disorder. Overwhelmingly, those that are seeking treatment for drug or alcohol abuse, a substance use disorder, there is a mental health issue often involved, a co-occurring disorder. So depression, anxiety, other issues uh, they may be experienced that leads them to try and cope with their mental health by using a alcohol or an illicit substance. If parents are not watching what's going on, that puts that kid at risk. And then at the bottom, adverse childhood experiences, we used to call this trauma. So the death of a family member, domestic or sexual abuse, frequently moving from place to place. Certainly COVID-19 falls into that, right? Our kids are not with their friends, uh, staying home a lot, right? Not involved in activities. So uh, this really is a tough period of time for our kids and helping them develop coping skills to get through adverse childhood experiences is where we need to go and again, do good prevention. See the protective factors, right? So these are things you're working with your school, your community, your faith-based organizations. You're trying to build a healthy self-concept for your child. Self-control, your child makes decisions for himself or herself. They're not always falling into the trap of doing what their kids, their friends are thinking. And then you're working to develop healthy peer relationships. You want them hanging out with other kids who are not using. Good parental monitoring, so watch what's going on, being involved, right? If the child is attached to school, if the child likes school, well, that is a good protective factor. Flipping it around, if a child has trouble, doesn't like school, is getting into some trouble, well, that turns into a risk factor. And then the more involved your kid is in positive activities, whether it's athletics, arts, hobbies, faith-based organizations, so we, during the summer of the partnership, we've been promoting healthy activities for the kids to uh, do and share with us. So noting that some kids are doing, uh, making remarkable ways of getting engaged and enjoying life despite difficult times. So one talked about hanging out with his dad and others doing various activities. So that is an important part of prevention, especially just going to finish up with a few more slides and then we'll take some questions. So no sound to this video, a missed opportunity. So right with kids and their earbuds and putting them on, right? It's tougher now to connect with kids, but you, you want to have a conversation, right? Even if it's just five to 10 minutes at the beginning and having your children tell stories, right? Some conversation starters, you know, all right, what are kids saying about vaping? Or if you saw in the news that something happened, what's the toughest thing you're going through these days? So getting a, a question out there that requires them to tell a story, right? A story with a beginning and middle and end and then by telling these stories, we think a kid will more likely be willing to tell you when they're having a difficulty or a problem with substance use or other issues. Okay. 
Okay, honey, man's on first. Okay, see, see how the runner's starting to edge off the base a little bit? I think he's going to steal second. What's that funny guy doing? That's the third base coach, and he's giving signs. He's telling the batter what he wants him to do. He's pinching his chin, he's squeezing his nose, he's squeezing his shoulders. It's you know that way. talk you've been meaning to have with your kids about not doing drugs? A little. Well, you're right maybe it. you're already having it. Okay. Getting involved with your kids is a proven way to keep them from getting involved with drugs. So who won? We did, sweetheart. And then a, a good prevention strategy, having meals with your kids, all right? You have five or more meals per week. They find it easy to talk to their kids and find the children begin a dialogue with them. Right? As I noted, having the conversation starting at the age of nine, right? So uh, getting the family meal together, if the grandparents can come over, that's great. If the young aunt or uncle can come over and sort of be a buffer and back you up, you know, simply saying, you know, I know mom is driving you crazy, but you know she loves you and looks out for you and wants the best for you, right? So they're getting the cousins over for dinner, right? But we know with COVID-19 that that might not be possible. But the family meal remains a critical way for families to bond and connect, okay? And then finally, some take-home points, right? We talked about being involved, working to build the self-esteem of your children. You want them feeling good about what they feel about themselves, whether they're involved in activities regarding how they look, how they interact. Very tough for kids these days, especially with social media, where kids have a way of knocking each other down. So you want them to feel comfortable with who they are and where they are at, okay? Unconditional love. If the child makes a mistake with drugs or alcohol or other issues, they're cared for, they're loved. So it's the parent who sets unrealistic or inflexible rules, that kid is at risk, okay? But you want rules that make sense, right? So if the seventh grader leaves and comes home drunk, whether male or female, that kid should already know what the consequences are because you've established them. Mom or dad, if the punishment was, well, you're grounded for three weekends and no use of your cell phone, well, mom and dad, you're grounded for three weekends, right? So if you're going to put a rule in place, you have to hold the kids accountable. And then do not accept the idea that it can never happen to my kids. So we at the partnership, sad to hear parents tell us, well, I just didn't think it was going to happen with my kid. So every kid is at risk. So Angelo Valente, our executive director, talks about even a kid using an opioid one time, right? You don't know what that's going to do to that kid's brain. And then you need to know what to do in advance if something occurs. Who would you call? Who would you contact? So we have a resource available to you that you can, that has numbers throughout the state to provide ways for you to reach out to organizations that can provide assistance to you. So, I'm going to end it there. I'm going to let Angela take over. So uh, appreciate you participating. We do have school-based programs. We have a workplace program on our media campaign. So you have the child parent survey that's up there, right? Okay. I'm going to turn it thanks over. Thanks so much, Bill. Okay. Thanks, Bill. And thanks. Um, continue to stay on the um, presentation with us and some of the great questions that you have provided. I do want to mention that this presentation is available as a pre-recorded webinar um, for your groups, whether it be your uh, school community, um, your workplace, your um, community organization that you participate in, um, your faith, your house of faith, their house of worship. Um, you can request this presentation, a link to this presentation, and share it with that community so they can be educated as well. So um, I know we have a few questions, Bill. Specifically, can you talk um, to the impact of COVID-19? I know for this community in Ocean County, as the question came in, they were really affected by Superstorm Sandy and saw an impact on the drug and alcohol use. Um, what do we anticipate seeing after COVID and how has the trauma of that impacted or will have an impact as we move forward? So uh, we are beginning to see signs of the, the negative impact just as Hurricane Sandy 
So we talked about the stress level. So imagine somebody that is using alcohol or other drugs and maintaining a job, right? They're working Monday to Friday, they're putting in a 40 hour week and abusing alcohol on the weekends, right? Now COVID-19 hits, well, if they're using alcohol or other drugs to deal with their stress, their stress level has gone up and they're going to be abusing the product more, right? Uh, Marielle Huffnagel gave a great presentation a, a few weeks ago for our opioid awareness program, right? Knockout opioid abuse. And she talked about people feeling hopeless, right? So imagine someone not having a job or losing a job. This COVID-19, when will we get back, right? We thought it'd be just a couple of weeks or maybe six weeks. And now this is an ongoing pandemic that we've never experienced in and before regarding such a health issue uh, impacting us. So stress level, that's an issue, okay? The access to treatment programs, the access to your program to maintain your recovery. So many individuals are using telehealth and uh, good adjustments have been made so people can maintain their recovery, but some people not having access to a computer, needing that person-to-person -person interaction that is so important to recovery. So uh, those gaps are allowing for people to fall through the cracks, all right? And then you add to joblessness, unemployment, uh, not being able to pay your rent. So all of these critical factors, right? Not having enough food for your family. So uh, that is an issue. So, uh, and then uh, what what is happening to people or individuals that are, have come back or right, uh, does the use of drug sales, does that supplement my income? So uh, that is a piece of the puzzle. So a whole variety of issues. So I don't know if Angela, if you want to pitch in as well. No, absolutely, Bill, and I think I'll, I'll speak. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, actually, and to speak directly to children, right? Um, yes. For the children in your lives, I think it's important to understand that they are dealing with significant changes. There is stress and there is trauma. So really having them understand that um, you are there for them, that they can, no need to self-medicate, that instead they should be coming to you with those questions. I think, look, um, obviously this is a big change whether it be not being in school or whatever the case may be. So I think, um, you know, whether they know someone who's impacted, just hearing the stuff in the news, it can be scary stuff. So I think really knowing that this is going to have some impact and really looking at that prevention intervention in order to have the child speak to you um, and be able to, um, you know, get that out and get that stress resolved. Um, rather than having um, them self-medicate by turning to drugs and alcohol. We do have some information and um, we'll share in the follow-up to this email. We did do a webinar with actually a therapist, a family therapist from Ocean County um, a few weeks ago. And we'll share the link to that pre-recorded event for you to view if you're interested in additional information on the impact of COVID specifically on um, on our children and what we can do to prevent them from turning to drugs and alcohol to deal with um, with that issue, and you know, with everything that is um, that's going on with social distancing and everything that that brings um, to the table. So um, I know, Bill, we have another question just about how um, sharing of vaping tools could lead to the spread of COVID-19. Not sure if that's something that you can speak to, but I know that. Um, Vaping in general is an issue that's um, been a top priority of, of the partnership. And as you've been um, prior to social distancing, traveling the state and, and interacting with other parents, do you want to share anything on that, Bill? So, uh, right, I'm in prevention, so the, I don't want to address the specific issue of sharing a vaping product, right? I'd rather say, I don't know, and send me an email and we can help you out. But we do have data beginning to show that. It, if an individual uh, has been vaping, the concern is you've compromised your respiratory system. So those that have been using vaping, we're wondering, are they gonna be hit harder by COVID-19? That it's gonna be harder on your respiratory system to come back. So that certainly is a, a concern. And then, right, certainly the sharing of products is uh, 
right? We, we look at what we're doing. We're not even sharing menus anymore. So the sharing of a vaping product that you put in your mouth, I don't have the data, but it's certainly not something I would recommend my children to be doing. And I'm sure physicians would agree as well. Right? Absolutely. Um, thanks, Bill, for that. And thank you again, um, all of you, for participating. If you have any um, additional questions or need any additional information, please feel free to reach out directly to Bill. Um, his email address is on your screen, bill at drugfreenj.org. Um, also, if you're interested in getting a pre-recorded version of the 15-minute child break that you can share with your community, with your school, um, with your faith group, please, um, you can email him or visit the website drugfreenj.org uh, to request that link. And we'll be happy to share it with you um, as well as kind of an explanation sheet on how um, you can use that link and, ha and how to get it out there. Um, again, thank you. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. Everyone have a beautiful day and be well. Mm -hmm.